So hello, I'm Julian Rice. I am 26 years old. I've been with Bad Luck Jealousy vaguely on and off for like four or five years. Okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, Bad Luck Jealousy is just sort of like when we, when we get together. We used to be dysfunctional roommates. Like four it's... years ago and uh, two months ago. Dysfunctional how though? We never, we were never like at each other's throats. No, no, but it was always like built up like tension about things that we assumed now. the other person was talking about. Don't do this in about. front of the, the fucking cameras. No, but like, <laughs> yeah, this is the thesis didn't... of the band. We have to be talking about like this, about how we, how about we, fe how we fetishize dysfunction. Cause like really- Bad we're... luck jealousy. Bad luck um, jealousy, like privileged rich kids who like really fetishize like dysfunctional artists. Kurt Cobain. That's a big one. Kurt Vonnegut. Oh, he likes that, yeah. The Kurtz. We like the Kurtz. Alternate band names. <laughs> we so love the Kurtz. Yeah, exactly. Who is Bad Luck Jealousy? Wow, who? Me. Him. <laughs> Together. It's like Let's the fight about it. It's the United Two, although, like, yeah, I have an album that I mainly wrote and, and recorded myself, but then I couldn't have released it if it wasn't for him. It yeah, wouldn't, I just it wouldn't kept exist. on bugging him to actually release it. I didn't actually get into, like, contemporary music until I was, like, 16 or 17. All of a sudden, I just fell in love with Dinosaur Jr. and Sonic Youth. And that was actually my gateway to pop music, believe it or not. Uh, now I listen to uh, a variety of, uh, of wonderful acts from the 80s. Got The Cure, got New Order, got Husker Du, lots of people. Replacements. I think, I think Let It Be by The Replacements is the best album that has ever existed. Uh, Huge, it is a wonderful. Um, Huge. No, it's a, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's fact actually. I think it is is the most <laughs> frank and um, and and an intense depiction of maturing the process of maturing. <sighs> I mean, my childhood I was only really into like classical music and and video game music, which I I I, I, I mean I, I play with that and sample it sometime like everyone else does to inspire nostalgia in our generation. I think the music of, 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 of my adolescence is, is more what uh, affects me. I think just very, very cathartic punk, post-punk uh, genres is what mainly gets to me. As well as, um, I've also kind of developed over time a, a taste for uh, kitschy or kind of very um, hideously conventional music. And, and I quite enjoy that. Boom, boom, hideously conventional. Okay. Bad luck, jealousy. We should, yeah, yeah, bad luck, jealousy, hideously conventional. I don't have a better answer than just it's sort of that's the way it happened. Well, yeah, our, our <laughs> initial how it, uh, how it happened. Our initial EP kind of brought us towards this general conception of the band as uh, an exploration and an exploration of both our tendencies to fetishize all these dysfunctional personality traits that we see in this artist archetype that we and our peers have idolized a lot. Uh, mainly just because our life doesn't go the right direction we want, so we look at people different from us, i.e. people who actually have things to complain about. And uh, Yeah, we have privilege. Yeah. Like, like insane amount of privilege in a way, like where, it, it, bad luck jealousy, like I'm jealous of people's bad luck. Like, I wish I had bad luck. It's the, the literal, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we got that name actually from a, a typo in a psychic ad. Like, it's about exercising, you know, bad juju, like, you know, oh, yeah. bad luck, you know, there's no comma, jealousy. That's where it came from, but um, we kept it because we're literally jealous of, of people with bad luck. Like, like Kurt Vonnegut saw the bombing of Dresden and that inspired a lot of beautiful art. And, and, uh, and I want to be loved like Kurt Vonnegut, therefore I, I, I want to see bombs drop. Aren't I a great person? It's like uh, I recorded that album. We have an album called Trucking Dreams, which I mainly recorded myself at my cottage over like a year and a half span. Mainly because like I was just super depressed and also just didn't want to be around people. And that's mainly the thesis of the album, Trucking Dreams. It's like I want to be a trucker so that I don't have to deal with anybody. And that was like a really vague fantasy, because like the more you go towards it, the more you realize you still have to do things to achieve the dream of that, and you just can't. <laughs> you just like it's just like why would you do that, you know? So you have to do like you have to be who you are, and not just like dream about being a trucker, because that's like it doesn't get you anywhere. It's fantasizing about <laughs> isolation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's really more the like a condensing of other things, like because this is like maybe the six out of twenty uncompleted songs that are just like in various states of completion and it was just these ones that came to head first and then we just looked at them and it was like oh well this the order could be this and it flows well and Adrian, that was it. yeah spends the majority of his of his of his time of his evenings just obsessively recording and re-recording music and never yeah, releasing I don't do it. that as much anymore like I, it's in in the way he's talking about it, it's more like i want i have a song in my mind like i have a riff or something like 
and um, I could record the riff like 20 times over, like just going, um, just to get it right and perfect. And then I would, if I didn't get it perfect, I just would leave it alone and not come back. So there's like a lot, a lot of those kinds of things that exist. But Trucking Dreams is also sort of a, an exploration of like going back to those things and like try, and also writing new ones. Like the title track Trucking Dreams was really like from that time. It wasn't like parts from before. It was like a, a song that was newly recorded. Um, it's a summation of just this isolated lifestyle we yeah. were living at the time. Yeah, like really like <laughs> the, the idea of wanting to be the trucker and just like imagining that, that, that's really the thesis of the album. But also many of the songs are the thesis in a way. I personally really like that album and was very nervous to release it just because it was the only thing I wanted to do for a long time was, was record music because nothing else seemed fun or interesting or everything was just sort of blown out of the water. Like the only thing I, I could feel like I wanted to do was record this uh, these songs. And ultimately they came down to what Trucking Dreams is. Um, and I was just nervous for what people would think is obvious, but it's uh, real also. I would, there's one thing I could say is that I like prog music a lot, um, or I liked it a lot. I liked dream theater when I was young. So like there was always this thing they would do, they would change styles, like not really necessarily for the benefit of the music sometimes, but they would just change styles entirely. And I always thought that was really interesting or whatever. And so on my like sort of low level, more like in the indie sphere level, like I, I like to do that and just like play with funk or play with this and play with- Well, it adds um, a level of dynamism and theatrics. But it's also just what I like. I don't think it's more than that oh, necessarily. Yeah. Like I'll play, be playing a song and then I was like, you know, this has gone on for too long or something and like go and try and switch it up and think of things. And it's not necessarily like uh, intellectualized. Well, I think it's just an intele it's just a intuitional sense that it, it fits to, to vary up the arrangements, vary up the genres in order to kind of establish an overlaying theme or feeling to the song. Like the very, very sudden um, aggressive spike towards the end of the, the very calm intro track can be kind of interpreted as kind of breaking out of the daydream about trucking dreams. Themes. I mean, the first the first EP we released is this three song thing called Life Waster, which was basically like us ironically, but also seriously, like being in the void, like not like, for me it's just existential nothing. Like you're just waking up, you're doing things like this, there's nothing going on. This one is like the, almost the response because it's been like four or five years since this. I don't know what it is between that and this. We have, we've tried so hard to make something between, like we've yeah. gotten together and made like ideas for EPs. Like we tried to record songs, nothing came about nothing came about because it was all just like felt useless and we could we unmotivated and then finally like it took me like having to leave our apartment going home like living at home not knowing what my job was having no job like, and me seeking professional help for my depression uh yeah i had to sort of obliterate myself to come back to reality in a way because like the person i was was not realistic it was like a person who just wanted to be Kurt Cobain so bad that everything suffered basically like you want to you want to be a martyr you want to be so sad that everyone is like thinks you're deep as fuck or so you don't but then you end up like retracting into yourself endlessly and then you trucking dreams is like am I gonna keep dreaming or am I like and just go to the to the crash basically like at the end like am I gonna just go that far or like am I gonna try and wake up no, no, I feel like it's. I just chose the other path. It's, just so it's still relevant. And like this, the bad luck jealousy name is still relevant because of that. <laughs> our actions and our thoughts of our past will still have an influence on us. What we are doing is ultimately influenced by it because we're always going to be commenting on it in some way or another mm. with our future projects and our future ideas. From that, who are you? Do you become? It's like a little narrative, like a story. Like, so that's where we started, and it's relevant because that's, I don't know, you're birthed with a name, right? Like I was, how did they know that I would be Adrian or someone that could be an Adrian? You know what I mean, like Bad Like Jealousy is what was our name when we birthed it, so that's it. So um, Life Waster, the album art for Life Waster is actually, um, is from uh, a night we spent on the town uh, climbing buildings and uh, filming people with a secret. And, um, That's really what we did. <laughs> the, actual, uh, the actual album cover just comes from a very, very drunk, stumbling guy we saw walking around. Yeah, he he felt saying, like he oh, very yeah. just, uh, we know this feel, I'm gonna put it on our EP. Yeah, cover. he was like walking away from his party of people or something. Like we, we had this vantage point where we saw his, his friends and then he walked all the way away, like stumbling down the street as if it, like, I don't know what was happening. But then he's like, he like stood around and then like sat against the wall of the building. Like clearly this guy's drunk. He's not having a good time. No, he's not having a good time. But here we are like on top, like taking this photo of him and being like, like we relate to you. Like, we get it, man. I see a Trucking it, Dream as a progression, actually, from Life Waster. In the sense that... We haven't, we haven't thought about Life well, at least I haven't thought about Well, Life Trucking Waster. Dreams takes place a couple of years later in our lives, where we've been kind of living and stewing within, you know, 
the obsession and paranoia and fear of not existing that it's kind of just become an, an old blanket of a friend that we're, we're reevaluating in Trucking Dreams. I think it was more like a solidification coming out of, like Trucking Dreams sure has that statement about like, this is the time to do something or not, but like, I feel like it also provides me with the doing it. Now I see that in it, like I want to yeah. like keep continue. You um, can sure. kind of say that, that the making of the EP Trucking Dreams has kind of expelled a little bit of it by solidifying it, by giving a concept a more solid place in the world. It's an easier way to exorcise it. It makes it less of a ghost. Yeah, um, it exists. Yeah. I think that both Life Waster and Trucking Dreams are uh, speak very much of the times that they are made in, you know, within our lives. Life Waster kind of being at, in the very bottom of the trench of obsessing about your future and your potential and in this very narcissistic bubble. Whereas Trucking Dreams comes a couple years later, um, after we've studied it for so long that we finally come to realize the bounds of this jail that we put ourselves in, and, and, and we're, we're cataloging it, figuring it out, and maybe seeing how we can escape what's on the other side. So in that sense, there is a, there is a progression of themes from Life Waster to, uh, to the new EP. Uh, we, I mean, our music evolves as we evolve as people, and vice versa, sort of. Having created Trucking Dreams was like a, a looping success in a way, like where it helps me go further. Like, I know what I've tried to tell myself. It's like me talking to myself in that way. Like, a lot of the songs are addressed to myself, saying, like, just just where are you going to go? Like, what are you going to do? Like, just, just decide. And then Terry's car is just, like, full on, like, just keep going. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, like, do something stupid, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, we, we've done it a couple times. That one was really good. Our first live performance was really cool. Um, that like coffee shop show and we, we had our, our oh, yeah. drummer from Crackers and Jam, Sam, was there. Mm -hmm. And like, that was a great show. Pretty, pretty well, great. once he <laughs> jumped off the stage and clipped his head on the light and oh, was yeah. bleeding from his forehead. Yeah. That's probably a worse experience than uh, that one just than wasn't fun because the whole show was bad. We we played uh, th this LME show. We played with another band. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> um, it was at a venue that about a month later was closed down because it turned out that they were dealing crack there, Everything, and uh, yeah. they mixed like that. Yeah, they were really on crack. They had like a radio playing half our show, like in, yeah. the, in one of the speakers. It was like it was like the inside of a crackhead, you know, like. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't dive off the stage also, just to clarify, like, it was just, we, the show ended and we were all like, like, wow, that was horrible, and then we're walking up the stage and I went like this and I hit a speaker. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like me being cool or anything, like, I wasn't <laughs> being cool at all. It's in a much better state than it was a couple of years ago. I, I think that the, the general tension in the music scene from several years ago, uh, where it just seems like everyone was trying to, to compete, to act like they don't care, um, is finally getting tiresome to people and they're finally kind of actually saying their mind now. Yeah, it's just getting old. Like, it's so boring to like co constantly play being aloof. Like, it doesn't work after a while. Everyone's finally either dropping out of the race, as it were, or like, you know, like, or, or because they, they realize they have other interests and things. Or they're opening up and actually saying interesting things. Yeah, and yeah, that too. Like people, I don't know, that's it. Like, like people who really want to be musicians are kind of still around. Like I don't think I want to do anything else with my life in reality. So I might as well continue. <laughs> Keep on trucking, I suppose. Keep on trucking dreams. <laughs> uh, probably. I haven't spoken to all of them, but it could be also my perspective on it. It's a good enough question. I don't know if everyone feels the same way. Uh, all I know is that I feel the way I do and it's helped me create the things that ultimately are what I want to do. Like I want to, I want to make music, and the idea of like having something to say helps me do that. So I feel like that that's all. Like maybe it's not a good thing to say, but I'll say it anyway because it helps. Um, touring in the summer, full length album, many little singles, videos. We got like half a dozen like videos already set up basically. 